Assalamu alaikum. Welcome everyone for a new webinar from Race of Arts View Channel Company. Our, uh, our today webinar, Role of sedimentary, Sedimentology in Production to, uh, in Exploration to Production, a New Vision by Dr. Ahmed Qasim. Uh, actually, uh, I will do a dust. I will announce our next course of integrated formation uh, evaluation. This, uh, actually, it is a workshop, seven days workshop. It will integrate the conventional logs, the total combo of neutron density, gamma ray, and resistivity, plus to calibrate the interpretation by using the core analysis, special core analysis, and also between core analysis. Then after that, and the advanced part of image processing and interpretation uh, using the logs of FMI or the OBMI in case of having oil-based map. It is seven days uh, workshop. The course fees is only 35 USD for students and for working professional is 50 USD. By attending that course, 
you will enjoy access or full-time access to recorded sessions. Also, you will work in actual field data sets. You will have application-based workshop. The course material is provided uh, session by session. And also at the end of the course, you will have certificate with online identification ID. By the end of this course, you will be able to QC field log data, perform interpretation for conventional logs, the triple combo, evaluate reservoir potential, select the optimum perforation intervals, and calibrate log interpretation using the core data. Also, for FMI, you will do processing and QC for the data or the field data for the FMI log, and also you will do manual depicting. Identify, identifying clay distribution prototype that are important for reservoir modeling. Course content is seven days. The first day for well logging, quality control, the day number two for prosody evaluation, the day number three for the electrical properties and water saturation calculation, the day four for the lithology interpretation for complex formation, and the net pay identification. And the DIN5 for the processing of borehole application using the FMI or the OPMI looks. Uh, also the QC for the field data. The day number six, you will have four image the computation, manual depicting and structured dip removal and other features. The day number seven for permeability modeling like for permeability measurement in core and the quality core of the quality control of core permeability, the permeability for the NMR look and buckles plot, and also at the final permeability estimation in Ancore wells. Thank you all. If you all have if you have any interest of our course, you can enroll into it by the link that will be sent into the Zoom chat. Okay. For our webinar today, the instructor for our Webinar, it, Dr. Ahmed Qasim has PhD in sedimentology from Ain Shams University, master degree and past um, bachelor from Yogyakarta Cairo University. He has 15 years of experience as petrologist and also sedimentologist. He worked as core analyst and reservoir biologist in Corex, Egypt, Libya, and UK. He is consultant specialist with Schlumberger in Saudi Arabia. He also reservoir biologist in core laboratories in Abu Dhabi. Dr. Ahmad is a department head of petrology and sedimentology in exploration team at Gapco ENB company in Egypt. He is lecturer and lecturer assistant of petroleum technology and geoscience in private university. He published many articles in highly ranked journals in sedimentology and reservoir geology, such as marine and petroleum geology and petroleum science and engineering. Thank you all. If you have any question, if you have any question for the webinar, please you can drop it into the Zoom chat, and our instructor will answer it as soon as possible. Also. Please mute oh, yes. the phone and don't start any video. Thank you all, and Dr. Ahmed, you can start now. Hello, Abdullah. Hello, everybody. Uh, Abdullah, I can't. Uh, can you open the access to share my screen, please? Yeah, you can share now. Uh, my screen is uh, available now on your screens. Yeah, but please, uh, I think that you have two monitors. So, is it try? Yes. Okay, so you just swipe the display. Uh, what about now? Is this uh, clear now? 
um, you have uh, you have in the display the display setting from above. Yeah. Display setting. Uh, display setting uh, in the PowerPoint. Think of view options. In the above of the screen. Okay. Uh, sorry for that. <laughs> no, 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 no problem, Shamo. You see now both screens, yes? Is it right? No, I, I see the other screen, which is the the notes plus the uh, the slide. Ah. Okay. So I think from that screen, you have the option of display setting in above. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Swap. <laughs> yeah. Is it now? You see my slides now? <laughs> uh, you can press the swap. Swap. Yes. What about now? I have the, I have I have swapped my presentation. Uh, what do you see now? Uh, I think that's it. So we can we, we can use uh, yeah yeah it's okay now. Thank you. So you you say my not my presenter view. You say the presentation. Is it right? Yeah yeah. You can start now, doctor. Okay, thank you, Abdullah, for thank the introduction. Uh, and hello, everybody. And thanks for attending this presentation. Uh, Happy New Year. And I hope the next year all of your dreams come true. Uh, we, here, we, we here will talk about how the sedimentology and petrology. How, uh, how, hello? My voice is clear, eh, Abdullah? Yeah, it's clear now. Okay, okay. We will talk about how the sedimentology and petrology techniques. We'll talk, we will talk about, sorry. I'm sorry for that. We will talk about how the sedimentology and petrology technique will be beneficial in oil yeah, uh, and gas. Doctor, I'm sorry, uh, but please share your screen again. Uh, you need uh, to share my screen again? Yeah. Stop sharing and share my screen, okay. It's shared now? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, but into the presenter, so swap your, uh, swap your. Uh... I have swapped it. It's swapped now. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Apologize for that, but it's no clear problem. now for everybody. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you everybody for attending. Let us start our application. We will here focus on the petrographic techniques the sedimentology and the petrographic techniques and how it will be beneficial, beneficial for in the exploration, development and the production of hydrocarbon. Uh, but in this time with a new vision, the new vision here, I mean it by a workflow. I used to optimize these benefits. I used to optimize the benefits of petrology, application of petrology and sedimentology in oil and gas exploration and production from exploration, development and production. We will cover in this webinar the objective of the sedimentological evalu evaluation. What is the objective of sedimentological evaluation? And the, then we will solidify our knowledge about why the sedimentological characteristic is important from a static model to produce my fluid. Then what is the different scales of sedimentological characteristics to figure out my data I have and use the available data I have? Then I will move to the hierarchical steps to, uh, to, to find my reservoir characterization. The new vision here to follow a hierarchical steps to get optimized predictive reservoir model. Then how to analyze the reservoir quality and what is the reservoir quality controllers? The diagenesis and the genetic modeling. 
is very critical topic. We will cover it during the presentation that will affect on my mapping and my reserve calculations. Finally, I will try to, during the presentation, to give you a highlight on the enhanced oil recovery techniques and how, and how it damages the reservoirs instead of enhancing the production. So the main objective of my presentation or the main objective of any sedimentological evaluation is to create optimized predicted static model that will be used for property modeling, distributions of physical property, property analysis in, in property modeling, and also to optimize the reservoir simulation models that will be delivered to the reservoir engineer. So the sedimentological evaluation is very critical in identified my model, my static model, and all of its stages from static to dynamic, from exploration idea to produce my fluid from underground. So for myself, I, I, I divide the sedimentological evaluation into two main categories. The first one is the facious production. I need, this is, this is the optimum of any development or exploration geologist is to make a facious production, to know where is my sand bodies distributed in one direction. This facious prediction come by characteristics detailed characteristic analysis of all clastic and non-clastic rock through a nested hierarchical set of reservoir description. Through the petrogra detailed petrographic analysis using all of the data I have, using the core, using the sidewall core, using the ditch cutting, which be unused by many companies, wow. and using by also conventional logs and image, which is very critical. The second thing from my point of view in sedimentological evaluation is get an optimum reservoir discrimination optimization. We all know that uh, uh, our target as a sedimentology, sedimentology is to convert the static unit, is to convert my reservoir unit into a dynamic unit. Uh, most of us use the petrophysical reservoir rock typing to discriminate our reservoir. Uh, get the porosity and the permeability and deposit it in a charts and they get uh, regression equations and the most effect regression equations will be the will be my reservoir rock type. Uh, in many clastic uh, rocks it may be good, but in most unclastic reservoirs this uh, this all this classical reservoir discrimination by porosity permeability relationship not working at all. From sedimentological, from sedimentological evaluation or from petrological and sedimentological evaluation, I will try first before porosity and permeability relationship to discriminate my reservoir based on the actual factors that control reservoir quality, based on the factors that control my poor geometry, my poor rock geometry, so that I classified the sedimentological evaluation and facious production to know my facious, where it go, where it move, where it enhance, where it produce, and optimized the reservoir rock typing and the reservoir and the reservoir discrimination. So what are the what what are the sedimentological character why is the sedimentological characteristic important is important. Let me say to you that all the reservoirs are heterogeneous at the scale of converting the static model into dynamic performance. Uh, so the sedimentological characteristic will drive with me to obtain the geometry, the geometry of my reservoir sand body, for example, to detect the permeability buffers and the barriers, and also to define the high sweet zones, the high permeability zones. I can't get this, this uh, criteria or this objective without sedimentological characteristics. They know the geometry of the reservoir bodies, the barriers of the permeability and the sweet zones or the high permeability zones, which is very critical in enhanced oil recovery techniques. And sometimes I need to avoid this zone during my production or during my enhancing reservoir by acid stimulation job by pool heading, I need to avoid this high permeable zones. So this was of the benefits of detailed reservoir characterization or sedimentological characterization. I will address by sedimentological analysis the actual net to gross and how to distribute it. 
we all know that the net to gross differ from the positional setting to another. Uh, in fluvial regime, for example, in fluvial regime, for example, the net to gross of the, the net to gross and the net to gross distribution in the braided channel completely differ from that of meandering stream. The net to gross analysis and the gross distribution depend on the depositional model and the depositional regime. The change in the sand, the change in the sand body geometry and the net to gross variation will actually affect the type and also the, the gas in place. The distribution of reservoir quality maps overlay my sand maps or GDE maps, gross depositional environment maps, will optimize the development strategy and the tracking the high quality, the highest quality zone. And by the way, predicting the lowest quality areas to avoid. The sedimentological study drive me to predict how my rock and its composition will interact with the flow it used during the development stage or during the enhanced oil recovery stage. You have to know that about 60% uh, of enhancing the production or enhanced oil recovery techniques damage the reservoir instead of enhancing my reservoir due to using incompatible fluid to stimulate the reservoir incompatible fluid with the rock, incompatible fluid with the minerals, with the, with, with the controller of reservoir quality, lead to blocking the pore shot, lead to reservoir formation damage instead of enhancing my reservoir. So the detailed the sediment logical and the petrological analysis through a, hier a hierarchical descriptions is very critical even in the enhanced oil recovery technique to prevent, to predict any formation damage and try to prevent it before happen. In the first, I have to understand the different geological skills. I have to, I have to know that, that the different geological skills used to identify all the sedimentary processes, the sedimentary structure and the reservoir quality controller. I have to use all of the data I have from the prop which gave me a geochemical and the chemical analysis for a piece for a few centimeters of rock. Describing the drilling cutting, which unused by many companies. You have to know that the drilling cutting is very critical if you have no core. Uh, any depositional regime uh, will lift its imprint on the grain. So describing making sense section or XRD or scanning electron microscope from the edge cutting is very critical to understand the support geometry, to understand the relationship between the rock and the support and the distribution of the support, as we will see, to know that the factors control the reservoir quality. Then the core plug. The core plug gives you the porosity and permeability. And believe me, there is no other way to give you permeability measurement like the core, they are the permeability that come from the core. The permeability that come from the core is the optimum permeability you will get because you have a fluid pass through the rock and the permeability is the ability of the rock to conduct fluid. So the petrographic analysis in the core is very critical. Then upscaling the core study into the conventional core to interpret the sediment logical criteria. And the, con and the conventional core or the core is a sediment logical ground truss on the positional setting and identifying the porosity and permeability. So using the probe, any kind of any piece of data, small piece of data give you the chemical composition, the drilling cuttings that give you your reservoir, your pore geometry distribution, and the core plugs that in that that give you the pore, the different rock types, the pore and the porosity and permeability relationship upscale your description from the current to logs to make a field scale distribution, to make a field scale interpretation of your depositional environment. Talk about the, uh, uh, sorry, the descriptions and upscaled in the logs and the poor hole image is very critical. They will be integrated with the biostratigraphy data, biostratigraphy data to interpret my sediment logical unit with a time framework. It's very important at this scale. After that, integrated with a structure model to get a great geological model. 
and then a simulation model, optimized simulation model. So we moved from the prop drilling cutting to the core and then upscaled the core to the logs and build a chronostratigraphic model by using the biostratigraphic data and then grid model integrates us with the structure model to get a simulation geological model with optimizing this and integrating and interpreting with the sequence stratigraphy we will figure out a high predictable sequence stratigraph model. The sequence stratigraph model drive me to predict uh, my reservoir in in in, uh, in the area with, which I not belong to. So integrated all of this data together will dry will change my model from subsurface model into virtual outcrop model. So I need to follow a, a hierarchical this a hierarchic, a hierarch I need to follow a hierarchical step to get my reservoir sediment logical model. This hierarchical step drive me to produce a model or a multiple 3D distribution model of heterogeneity distilled into reservoir zones and deploy on it, which can be used for reservoir simulation. And they can also provide a quantitative conceptual model for a geological visualization. This hierarchical workflow started from my poor analysis. I start the flow to describe the poor geometry and define the heterogeneity that control my poor to conduct fluid by follow a set of reservoir quality des descriptors. This deep investigation allow me to discriminate the fishes. I will describe the poor, the plug, the poor geometry. This deep investigation allow me to discriminate the fishes into bed that have distinctive depositional and reservoir quality criteria, known as a petrotype. It's a very critical term we have to, we have to take in our mind, a petrotype. This petrotype will contain depositional criteria, contain depositional criteria, and, and then upscale, into, upscale it into depositional package. So, I will describe my, my, I will mix my sense section, describe the bore grain geometry, knowing the reservoir quality heterogeneity and the factor controlling my reservoir quality. Convert my rock into depositional dynamic and the basic reservoir quality descriptor, descriptors, then upscale it into depositional package. At this stage, I have a different depositional package. It's the package have its reservoir quality parameters, its deposition, its depositional criteria, its distinctive factor controlling the permeability and the controlling the flow of flow and the flow of capacity. Then upscale it by integrate the core with in the uncored wells and uncored interval. Integrate my core to the uncored wells and uncored interval by calibration with the log and the borehole image to interpret what is known as a genetic element, to get a reservoir component and the geometry in 3D dimension, in a 2D or 3D dimension, knowing my reservoir quality and the depositional setting within the same chronostratigraphic, within the same chronostratigraphy body into 3D distribution and geometry, known as genetic element. Then I'll scale it with a seismic into my sediment logical model. So I will have this reservoir architecture and stratigraphy consisting of different depositional package. It's a depositional package consisting of genetically related petrotypes. Each petrotype has the sediment logical and the reservoir quality characters that control my rock. So let us start with the lithotype, the first parameter in my hierarchy. The lithotype used it in the geology used it to characterize the cool bed in the geological investigation. But here, here we will use it to characterize the sedimentological characteristic and its reservoir quality imprint. So I will go to the core and get and des describe it based on the depositional and 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 the, uh, the depositional and the diagenetic factor control my reservoir quality. This lithotype, or I know it, uh, I call it petrotype, I can call it optimized rock type, is a purely descriptive way. I will describe my bed. We own it in a surface section. 
in the surface section or in a conventional core on drilling cutting or in a sidewall core, describe it based on the factors controlling my reservoir quality. So it is very practical dynamic term, describe the, the unit in a shape of code. Each lithotype code captures the basic lithology by a capital letter. So I will describe the basic lithology by a capital letter and the sedimentary or biogenic structures by suffix. So for example, this is a laminated sandstone. I will, I will describe it into la SL, which is a laminated sandstone. So in this description, I will know that I have a laminated sandstone. Horizontal permeability very, very will be more than the vertical permeability as we will see in the next slide. So I do, I recommend it. So after that, after describing my, my samples and describing my sand sections and the data into the petrotypes, con contain all the sediment logical factors and contain all the factors controlling the reservoir quality as we will see, I will, I will then discriminate the reservoir based on the descriptive parameter that controls the quality and give it a code. SL, for example, MS, for example, is a muddy sandstone charged with mud clastis. So the sandstone completely differ from that. The sandstone, the permeability and porosity of the sandstone differ from that. And by the way, and the sure differ from the conglomeratic lithic sandstone. These factors will then, uh, these codes will be linked to the core plugs in, in selection the core. If I have a core plug, say number one, core plug number one or number two or number three, and besides the core number, I put this code. So I will get the porosity permeability from the core measurement and will know that this core plug known as laminated sandstone, known as the positional factor like lamina controls the reservoir quality. This is what is meaning by uh, a lithotype. So let us summarize it. If I have, for example, three different depositional process within the, within the same depositional within the same depositional uh, framework of deep marine turbidite, low density turbidite, high density turbidite, high pride, high pride turbidite. All of this, all of this series system within the same depositional complex, for example. And they have the same porosity permeability profile as you see here and here. Let us get the example for the hybride bed. And as you know that the hybride bed is a type of sediment gravity flow consisting of, consisting of amalgamated multiple flow process, including debris flow, turbidity flow, and the transitional flow. In my case, I in, so the hybride flow, let us repeat it, please. The high pride flow is a, a, a complex of a type of sedimentary gravity flow, as you know, uh, com co consisting of multiple flow process, including debris flow, turbidity flow, and the transitional flow. All of this in a single depositional regime and generally consisting of a basal clean sandstone, ab above it, about a uh, sandy laminated sandstone and the mud sandstone. So I replace the, the old nomenclature of high, of high pride bed with my lithotype. For example, if we go to the, the clean sandstone without any using my lithotype characteristics, we will find it composed of two things, cemented dewater sheet and the consolidated laminated sheet. The cemented dewater scene, we will find an isotropy in the permeability where the vertical permeability is higher than the horizontal permeability. And the reverse in the consolidated laminated sandstone. Let me say that if, you, if we use the old porosity permeability profile, can't discriminate this heterogeneity. Can't identify the heterogeneity come from horizontal and vertical permeability and isotropy. But by using the petrographic analysis and petrotypes, I can discriminate, I can tell to, tell to you that I have an isotropy in the horizontal and vertical permeability. Let me 
simplify it to you. If you use this, the prostate permeability profile and when, and when we use this uh, prostate permeability profile or prostate permeability relationship, we use the horizontal permeability. And never go to the horizontal and vertical permeability anisotropy. But if you go to the horizontal and vertical permeability anisotropy, you will, you will find two different rock types. You will find two different rocks that the fluid can flow through it. The lower consolidated laminated unit where the horizontal permeability is higher than the vertical one. But the upper, but the upper one is the vertical permeability is higher than the horizontal permeability. So the core plug, so, so the, the core plug coding, if it's replaced with the coding by the, uh, sorry, there is a mic work. Uh, and the core plug coding uh, integrated with the petrotype code will give you more beneficial uh, information <coughs> about the factors of my reservoir quality. So from the beginning, I am saying reservoir quality, reservoir quality. What is the reservoir quality? Sorry, and how we define it. We all know that we all know that the hydrocarbon is reside within the pore system of the rock. So the detailed understanding of the variability and the control on this pore system is the foundation of reservoir quality analysis. The reservoir quality is a study of the porosity, is the study of the storage capacity and the efficiency and the efficiency of this, or, and the, if the efficiency of the rock to conduct fluid, or the efficiency of my pore geometry to conduct this fluid. This is the reservoir quality. And the pore system attribute of a reservoir quality, as well as determining the factors which control my fluid to flow. This attribute is the depositional and the diagenetic factors. So we know that the, process, that the reservoir quality is a study, the prosody, the storage capacity, and the storage and the ability of my rock to conduct fluid. So what are the factors? What are the factors that control my fluid? Sorry. What are the factors that control my fluid to flow? I have to identify it. I have to identify the actual factors that control the permeability. What are these attributes and this factor? These are the, the rock factors. These are the, the factors that control the porosity. The, the inter, the, these are the depositional and the, the, like the grain size, the ductile content, the cementation. We know that the porosity is the pore between the cream and the permeability is the ability of the rock to conduct this fluid. If we, if we didn't give, give, make a deep investigation for the grain size, the depositional characteristics, and the, the genetic characteristics, we will miss many parts of the reservoir characterization. This is the fine scale reservoir characterization that figure out the reservoir heterogeneity, the reservoir uncertainty, and by the way, the reservoir predictability. So I need to understand what is the reservoir quality and what is the factors controlling it. I need to discriminate my reservoir first based on these factors that control the, fl the flow capacity, that control my, my rock to conduct flow before I make a regression equation to make a petrophysical rock type. So my first pass is defining the factors that degrading my reservoir parameters. Uh, let me say to you that the destruction any reservoir or any quality is easier than improving it. So the depositional criteria that distract my quality is a grain size, but if the grain size is, is larger, it will enhance my quality. The compaction, the trital, the clay distribution and the clay trital interpretation, I have to know and figure it out. The sedimentary fabric, like the lamination and the watering features, also also control my reservoir quality and my reservoir quality degradation. The cementation and the diagenetic characters, the secondary factors, also control my reservoir quality. I need first to classify my rock. I need first to classify my my rock, my zone, my reservoir based on these factors. 
and also I am have a secondary tectonic controls like deformation, which control my quality. This we are we will go through fast on the depositional and the, the diagenetic factors that control my quality. But to address this depositional and the diagenetic control, I have first created, I have created as Ahmed, I, as a sedimentologist, I have created a scheme or a route map by asking myself a several questions. I ask myself a several question. And the answer of these questions drive me to the modeling procedures, procedures I will follow. The scheme started with the actual depositional factors affecting my reservoir quality. The first question I ask myself, does the fabric and the texture explain the majority of porosity and permeability variation? If, if yes, if yes, uh, the fabric and texture and the depositional criteria will affect my reservoir quality variation and distribution. Then I will focus, I will go through focusing on the sedimentological and the depositional characteristics that control my reservoir quality model and integrate the reservoir quality variables within the sedimentological model. This will, lead, this will lead me to special prediction of reservoir quality variation. As we know, this primary depositional control is a sorting. Is a sorting, for example, how it changes in the size will act as an obstacle in, the, in, my flow, in my flow with the flow. The detrital mineralogy will also one of some primary depositional control on my quality. The shape of the grain, the ductile grains itself can distract my reservoir quality if it convert into clay minerals. The detrital clay is a grain size. If the grain size we know increased, it will give me high permeability rather than low permeability zones. So this under, so the understanding of the, of the depositional factors control my reservoir quality, let me to optimize my porosity modeling. But my optimize the porosity modeling based on the non-diagenetic factors that control reservoir quality, like sorting, as I have said, like the green shape and packing, and they know that the, the, the cubic packing is increased the porosity and permeability rather than, for example, our thrombic packing. The grain type, if I have uh, a labile grains, which is unstable grains, converting to another, to another minerals with movement. The distribution of the green fabric itself, like the sedimentary structure, the lamination, and the dewatering effect, the matrix and the matrix porosity. This will lead to permeability modeling. As we know that the theory behind the permeability modeling may May, may be complex, but actually it's very simple. We are in the permeability or the permeability modeling need to convert the, the, my units, need to convert my bed into a tube. For, uh, very simple, into a tube. The diameter of this tube is known as a pore throat. So I need to identify the parameters that control these tubes. I need to un I identify the pore throat size. And what parameter will, will control this pore throat size? Is the grain size controls the pore throat size? Is there another clay mineral controls this pore throat size? I have to identify it. And there, the pore network connectivity. To the rock to be permeable, the pathway of the fluid to flow must be empty from any mineral. So the permeability will be affected by any mineral will exist in the pathway of the flow, in the poor throat conductivity, in the connectivity itself. And also the flow is constrained by the smallest diameter along the road. So these are the depositional factor controlling my reservoir quality. And these are the first thing in my chart or in my roadmap to understand the factor control the quality. But what if? But what if, if the reservoir quality controller are not depositional factor, but some of the factor or the process that come after the deposition, like the compaction and the sedimentation? I ask myself, is the compaction explain the reservoir quality variability, which not explained by the texture or the fabric? 
I will jump to the compaction modeling and the compaction analysis for each fish, including the burial history modeling. This will lead me to predict the reservoir quality variation vertically with depth. But if the compaction is not the controller, so the cementation will, will account to explain the reservoir quality variability during constructing a diagenetic model. I have to construct a diagenetic model that address the control of cementation. Then I will predict the distribution of the cement with my reservoir. So uh, let me simplify that. I will first ask myself, is the depositional characteristic control my reservoir quality to focus on my sediment logical model and distribute the reservoir quality on this model? And they make a porosity modeling and permeability modeling. And they convert my reservoir into tubes. Each tube had its own permeability and its own factor controlling reservoir quality. Then ask myself, is the compaction uh, well explain the change in the reservoir quality is that not explained by the texture? I will go through the compaction modeling and then predict the reservoir quality with depths vertically. If not, the cementation, and I have to go through the diagenetic modeling, which will predict the distribution of the cement laterally in my model, and sure to avoid the, 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 point, the areas of high cementation, and track only the area of low cementation, or track the areas of, a, of enhancing in diagenetic or the diagenesis enhancing my reservoir quality. The diagenesis is very critical, and the diagenesis is the physical and the chemical and biological process that make my geochemical equilibrium to reservoir. There is a, a term known as a parogenesis, which refers to the time order of event in the history of the rock, and is based on a direct observation and measurements. So during the diagenesis, I will I will set a parameter that, that enhance my quality and that reduce my quality. And they make a parogenetic sequence. In terms of reservoir quality, the parogenetic sequence is generally used to describe the cementation and compaction and the dissolution that happen from this to construct a model of how the poor system evolved through time. This is one of the diagenetic models that tracks the zones which reduce the reservoir quality and track also, and, and as a sedimentologist or as a reservoir geologist, I have to track also, to track only the zones which make porosity enhancement or reservoir quality enhancement. In this case study, the feldspar dissolution in sandstone and the gluconite dissolution in carbonate is a factor that controlled my enhancement in reservoir quality. At this time, I created alisotypes from my sand sections, from my core description, and they discriminated my reservoir into reservoir quality units into into alisotypes, which controlled the fluid capacity controllers and they give a code to each plug. I can investigate the lithology composition and the main reservoir quality in each plug and it make a porosity permeability distribution to, and they know in what are the factors distract the reservoir quality like cementation and the factors enhancing the reservoir quality in a structured sandstone. I convert the porosity permeability relationship into a chart can predict the reservoir quality by using the optimum regression equation. So here I have a porosity permeability relationship. Also have information about which area enhanced and which area convert, reduced my reservoir quality and my reservoir units. The list of type at this stage identified the main depositional and the diagenetic factors of control the reservoir heterogeneity but out of my log scale. And I need a bridge, a kind of log, scale. I need a kind of bridge to track it laterally along the field or area of interest. So as a sedimentologist, I have to upscale it into another descriptive scale, call it called a depositional package. 
I have to upscale my lisotype, which come from since section and, and the geochemical investigation into another scale, upscale it into the positional package to try to track it by using the Pulhur image and by using the, unconven the conventional logs in the uncored interval and in the uncored well. So at this stage, I have covered all the factor controlling the reservoir quality in my process permeability relationship. So the positional package, so I need to upscale my lysotype into the positional package, which is a genetically related bed stacks lysotype. They are the next step in the hierarchy I have referred before. It's capture everything. It's capture the depositional characteristics in the lysotype with a complete view of reservoir quality that defined from my petrographic investigation. And also it show in the vertical trend, it show the succession in the flow type, the, hydro, the hydraulic flow unit and the environmental evolution. Each zone have its unique environmental interpretation, its unique porosity and permeability values. And at the same way, I, I figured out which factor controls the reservoir quality in each zone. You have to imagine that if I use these packages in my depositional model and they track it laterally, as we will see later. So this is the upscaling scheme I used to upscale the, the petrographic rock type or upscale a lysotype into the positional package. I use this scheme in the classic depositional packages upscaling. Uh, but defining, for example, the conglomerate between the, the same grain size and the same prosity and the same permeability and isotropy. And the different from the amalgamated sandstone, for example, and the amalgamated sandstone, which have a bed, which have a bed act as a barrier between the two, to the sand the heterolytic sandstone, to the mud brown heterolytic, to the mud rock, and so away. So I upscaled my different petrotypes units into the positional packages, into this depositional package, which I will use it to track laterally all of the reservoir quality. Oh. These this depositional packages, because of come from nested relationship, offer a more realistic reservoir quality. Uh, in that way, I provide the positional packages. So uh, till now, I make all of this analysis in a core, but actually, I need to link this 1D data from the core into 3D conceptual model, into 3D reservoir to make a decision making, to predict the quality and protect my reservoir. So I need to convert the data from the core to the uncored interval. As we know, we live in a core free world. So I need to track my depositional packages in the core into the uncored interval by using the pool hole image, by calibrated my log interval with the pool hole image. And from the pool hole image and the conventional log, I will to detect the actual depositional packages I have interpreted here. So if I have no core, I will go through the routine core analysis and, and the drilling cutting to make a petrographic and reservoir quality investigation and to provide the qualified qualified lisotype. type. If I have no core, I will not stop. I have to use a trailing cutting, I have to use a sidewall core to define my, my petrotype and my lisotype. And if I have sure the poor hill image, it will me, give me an positional environment interpretation with a depositional azimal data, with a paleo flow and the paleo slope interpretation. I have to understand what the nature of that I have. The depositional packages and the petrotype interpreted from the core, I have to integrate it with the uncored. I have to distribute it in the uncored interval and then calibrate it with the uncored wells by using a, a highly a high quality integ uh, log core to log calibration by using a depositional package. At this scale, I will distribute 
mylisotype and the depositional packages into the uncored interval and the uncored well. It's a very critical step. Have to the sodomontologist set, set with the uh, petrophysis to figure out the distribution of my depositional packages. Then go to the un after calibration with the positional package in the, un, in, in the uncored wells and the uncored interval, I will get a genetic element. I will distribute my, I will distribute my fish and my depositional packages along my area of interest. So I will have a genetic element, which is a reservoir component, have a definite geometry and a definite dimension. Upscaling it with the seismic data, I will distribute the genetic element in a 3D. I will have each genetic element have its, its own reservoir quality parameter and the controller has its own depositional factors controlling my reservoir quality has its own a, a, a poor geometry. I will, in each genetic element, have, I have the data to the factors controlling the reservoir quality. I have the data to convert this body into tubes. The depositional packages, as we know, have a universal applicability to genetic element. Uh, for example, this is come from, from five depositional packages interpretation. The feeder system, which is a major trunk distributory channel to a minor loop complex, which consisting of different distributory channel and the loop sandstone. If we go in detail to, for example, it is a feeder system, we will find it consisting from three different depositional packages and the three different, each depositional package has its own flow capacity. Starting from amalgamated of channels come from precursor deposits. Has its own, we can convert, convert it easily into different flow units differ from that of this massive sandstone, which is which which is the same hydraulic flow unit. But in the middle there is a, a, a there is a mud clastic unit which act as a barrier at this level. No one, no any a modified rock typing technique can give you this modification. But with the sediment logical analysis you can predict where is your one a species model, for example, will go laterally and vertically. This stuff will covered, were covered in the above by a smaller scale channel feature that will have another kind of deposition regime, another kind of quality distribution. After that, I will build my internal architecture model of, has different skills. I, I started. I started with the port geometry. I started with the grain size from thin section. I scaled it into depositional packages. Then I scaled it into genetic elements. Each genetic elements have uh, all of its reservoir quality contributor, all of its parameter, and they can easily distribute it laterally to different genetic elements. Uh, this this genetic element completely differ from this. This is a tube has a hydraulic flow on it. Completely differ from that. Completely differ from that. Even I can predict the scale is increasing the scale of model. I can predict. I have now the factors that control my reservoir vertically and laterally. This is the optimum hierarchical to get the optimum predictive model, the optimum reservoir quality model. Let me finish, sorry. Let me finish my, my small presentation with the thoughts of Arnold Puma, who says that there is what is still discoveries uh, under in the underground, so that we have to go back to the rock. We have to go in detail to the poor geometry, to the and the, and the knowing what the factors control my rock. So after that, the geologist can explore, the geologist can observe, and the geologist can think. 
is the still the most important thing we have to we to keep. Thank you, and I hope my net connections and I hope my presentation find your interest. It's a very fast presentation. I will I tried to to deliver to you the, this uh, workflow I used to optimize the predictive model. Thanks. Thank you for your patience and your effort and time to that such an interesting presentation. Thank you so much. That uh, we we reach it to the to the maximum capacity for our Zoom room for the first time. That's because very very interesting session. Um, so any of the attendees, if you have any question, please type it in chat. Type. Anyone had any question? Hi. Hello, Mister. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. I have one question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have, we have uh, the question. Um, I think we have uh, questions here. Yes. yes. Uh, so please, please, for any question, type it into the Zoom chat, not open the okay. microphone. Yes. So we have a question, Dr. Ahmad, how to make use of seismic along with cementol? Actually, the using of seismic will be used in the hierarchy, uh, for example, in the, in the hierarchy, I will use it after making. Let me share my screen again. Uh, you yeah, see yeah, my screen? Sure. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yes, using of the, of the seismic data after calibrating my depositional packages was in the anchored wells and the anchored intervals. So I will use my I will use the seismic data to laterally track my depositional units to laterally track Beautiful. the best quality depositional unit. So the seismic is very critical and I will use it. But in the stage of the genetic element stage to distribute my interpreted depositional package laterally everywhere and to try to track it in the undrilled areas and undeveloped areas. Uh, is it clear? Okay, thank you. So another question, a leg of thin section, if yeah. you have a two types of permeability, light interparticle and structural permeability, how could we recognize that? Uh, actually, the interparticle is, is not a permeability, it's a porosity. And the permeability, as we all know, is the ability of the rock to conduct fluid. So if I have two types of permeability, let us say we have, if we have two types of rock type, uh, I can recognize this by using any data that differ. To, I have said, you have to say that we have two types of permeability. Then I have two types of rock types, of rock type. What are the factors that make this as two types of rock type? So I will go through the drilling cutting. Uh, every well has drilling cutting and they make a sense section to know the factors that actually may dif differ them to two different rock types. And you will define accurately why there are two different rock types. The fracture permeability or the fracture prosody that make uh, a good permeability cannot be interpreted by the sense section, cannot be interpreted by the drilling cutting, but I need to have an image, Burhil image, I need to have a core, a conventional core to define the fracture permeability zones. Okay. Uh, so the fracture, yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay. Uh, we have another question. What is the importance of deep water sedimentology in oil and gas exploration? Uh, it is very critical uh, question. Thanks for the question. The deep water reservoirs is one of the best reservoirs from the quality point of view, 
from the lateral distribution point of view. I have, uh, we will publish a paper soon about the deep marine turbidite deposits and I presented, prese presented this case from my paper. The deep water, the deep water sandstone or the deep water reservoirs, you will find a high aerial distribution for your deep marine turbidites, which, which deposited in the low stand system tract. So you will find a very high area of distribution and the vertical stacking pattern. For example, it, this area, I have three different reservoirs. You have to imagine that I have this reservoirs amalgamated sandstone above it about massive sandstone. This is completely disconnected with this reservoir. This is a hydraulic free unit differ from this reservoir. If I perforated my well hill, I will get a huge protection differ from that from here or that from here. So the deep marine turbidites or the deep marine reservoir is very important from the distribution, aerial distribution point of view from the reservoir quality point of view. One of the best classic reservoirs you will ever meet. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question. What is the minimum core size is needed for the analysis? Is needed for what? The analysis. Uh, if you have a, a one a one feet, if you have a one feet of core, you can uh, get the ben most benefit data of, of of analysis. But it will give you a unit discrimination. It will give you a very scale of a very small scale of investigation. You need to upscale it by using the drilling cutting. So you have to use any piece of data. There is no minimum number of core. I work it in an area I have two feet of core, but the core was at the unconformity surface. I get the criteria from this two feet that I have an unconformity surface. I have a characterization. I have a vague porosity, and I recommended to track. Uh, this classification laterally and to track the unconformed surface. And when you will find this unconformed surface, you will get the high hydraulic flow on it. So uh, work on any data you have, work on if even one feet of core, uh, integrate it with the uncored data, like the drilling cutting. Uh, if you have a poor hole image, it will be great to calibrate your core with a poor hole image. And by the way, you need to upscale it to the conventional logs. Okay. Uh, so the last question that we have, how can we integrate the rock, the, the rock types from petrographic with the petrophysical rock types in one optimum result that representing our reservoir? A great question, by the way. By you may, before you making your petrophysical rock type or the porosity permeability distribution and they get the regression equation, you have to make the petrographic rock type. What is the petrographic rock type? To discriminate your rock unit based on the actual factor controlling the permeability, which I highlighted in my presentation, like the grain size, like the mineral, the, 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 the diagenesis factors, like the clay minerals, abundance and distribution of clay minerals. If you first discriminate your reservoir by these factors, then get these factors to the actual core plugs and they make your porosity permeability relationship and the porosity permeability regression equations based on the rock, the rock types you got it from the petrographic analysis. Okay, if it is, uh, uh, I, I hope my answer will, uh, is clear. You have first to do discriminate your uh, unit with the factors that control the permeability and rust, like the sorting, the grain shape, the mineral analysis, the, 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 the factors that control my poor throat, which most of it, it is a rock factors. So discriminating this factor into the rock first will give you this, this shape, will give you the porosity permeability relationship controlled by the depositional and the diagenetic factor control my quality. Then apply the, process, the regression equations on this factor. You will get an optimized drug type by this way. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ahmad, for your effort and time to conduct such interesting uh, webinar. Uh, and thank, thank you. 
Thank you. And thank you for all the attendance to attend our webinar today. Thank you all and hope to see you into the next webinar.